This is the Disney Afternoon Collection, a brand new classic game compilation from Capcom. It's coming to PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and Windows PC on April 18th, and features six games based on the hugely popular Disney Afternoon cartoons that ran in the late 80s and early 90s. To help celebrate this upcoming release, I wanted to take a look back at what critics said about games like DuckTales, Chippendale Rescue Rangers, and Darkwing Duck when they were first released. We're gonna dig through the pages of Electronic Gaming Monthly, GamePro, Nintendo Power, and even Enforce to figure out the ranking of the six games featured in this collection. Join me as I average the scores and figure out which games in the Disney Afternoon Collection were best. Of all the Disney Afternoon games featured in this collection, Tailspin is probably the least well-known. There's a reason for that. This 1991 NES game was released immediately after both DuckTales and Chippendale Rescue Rangers, two well-regarded platformers that went on to define Capcom's Disney Afternoon series. Compared to those two, Tailspin is a bit of a dud, and the few critics that actually reviewed the game at the time were left underwhelmed. Enforce argued that the shoot 'em up offered nicely drawn graphics and solid gameplay, but suspected that most fans of the show would ultimately be left disappointed. Nintendo Power was a bit more generous, giving the game strong scores for graphics and gameplay, but complained that it was too easy and not for the more experienced shooter fans. The result was a so so 69%, making this one of Capcom's weaker efforts. After the success of DuckTales, Capcom was quick to expand their Disney Afternoon series with Tailspin, Darkwing Duck, and of course, Chippendale Rescue Rangers, most of which were met with great reviews and strong sales. Frustratingly, it took them four years to deliver a sequel to DuckTales, which meant that it came out three years after the show had wrapped production, or 24 years early if you want to bring up the new series. At this point, critics had largely moved on from the simplicity of the 8-bit platformers, and thus were not as willing to overlook some of the game's more outdated problems. Video games and computer entertainment gave DuckTales a 6 out of 10, complaining that it was more of the same. They gripe that you may find that DuckTales 2 isn't very different from dozens of other games derived from the same formula. GamePro echoed these thoughts, but liked it more than most. If it's more of the same you want, DuckTales 2 delivers. They gave it a 4 out of 5, ultimately recommending it to first-time players and fans of the show. Electronic Gaming Monthly fits somewhere in the middle, with the magazine giving the game straight 7s. Ed Semerad argued that DuckTales 2 is enough to make you want to dig out your NES again, while Martin Alessi noted that it's a great example that 16-bit graphics and high meg counts aren't necessary for a great game. Sushi X, on the other hand, left us with a baffling question. Who said third-party companies should make games that justify holding on to your NES anyway? Uh, I, I don't know? Much like DuckTales 2, the sequel to Chippendale Rescue Rangers came out four years after the original. Not only was this an eternity for an 8-bit licensed platformer, but it also meant that it was one of the last games released for the Nintendo Entertainment System. To put it in perspective, Rescue Rangers 2 came out only a year before the PlayStation and Saturn hit the market. As a result, very few people had a chance to actually play this game, making it something of a collector's item these days. Not knowing the game would be so sought after two decades later, Electronic Gaming Monthly gave the sequel scores ranging from 6 all the way up to 8. They argued that Rescue Rangers 2 comes off rather well and, if anything, makes you wish for a 16-bit version. Video Games Magazine gave the sequel a 7 out of 10, noting that while it may not live up to the high standards of its predecessor, it's not bad for an all-new NES title. That sounds like a backhanded compliment to me. Of all the classic video game magazines, GamePro and Game Players were the kindest to Rescue Rangers 2. GamePro praised the graphics and sound, giving it a 4.5 out of 5. Game Players, on the other hand, noted the simplicity, but said the hard bosses compensate. Unfortunately, this wasn't enough to offset the lower scores, and Chippendale Rescue Rangers 2 ultimately averaged a 75%.
When Disney went to follow up the hugely successful DuckTales cartoon, they decided to go with Chippendale Rescue Rangers, a fun crime-fighting series starring chipmunks named after an 18th century cabinet maker. When Capcom went to follow up the hugely successful DuckTales game, they decided to go a similar route, giving us a two-player NES title based on the much-beloved Rescue Rangers series. This should have been a perfect match, but not every critic agreed. British Meg Enforce gave it the lowest scores and called it a bit of an eyesore. There's no denying that with a good presentation, a tested formula works. Unfortunately, that's where this offering falls down. They also griped about the crummy collision detection before giving it a 66%. They were much harsher than most magazines at the time, but that's not to say that the other critics didn't have problems with Rescue Rangers. Electronic Gaming Monthly's Steve Harris complained that, like other Disney games, Capcom has hurt a great cart by making it too easy. And Samurai disagreed, saying that it's a player's game and calling it outstanding because of its true-to-Disney animation and good control. The magazine gave it a couple of 7s, an 8, and even a 9 out of 10. You also saw strong scores from Nintendo Power and Mean Machines, who gave the game a 4 out of 5 and 88% respectively. Chippendale Rescue Rangers averaged a score of 77%. Of all the Disney afternoon cartoons, Darkwing Duck is the one that makes the most sense as a video game. Sure, Scrooge McDuck was fond of adventure and Chippendale fought crime, but Capcom had to basically turn them into superheroes to make an action game out of their exploits. Darkwing Duck, on the other hand, was already a superhero, so Capcom had no problems turning this game into a fun Mega Man knockoff. GamePro praised the game, calling it great 8-bit action entertainment. Capcom usually leads the charge with NES gaming fun, and Darkwing makes his move with flying colors. They gave this 1992 action game a perfect 5 out of 5. Nintendo Power gave it a lower score, but still said it was one of the best action games on the NES. And Force was a little more negative, but still had nice things to say. They gave it a 77% and concluded that it wasn't exactly groundbreaking, but did offer a nice challenge, a good sense of humor, and offered smooth animation. They even made a duck pun that I'm not gonna say here, because it's groan worthy. It all averaged out to a solid 83%. There's nothing strange about Capcom buying up the license for a popular Disney cartoon. That's to be expected. What is strange is how well that licensed game turned out. You have to remember that this was 1989, and you could count on one hand the number of must-own games based on popular TV shows. But Capcom defied the odds, giving us a great game that kickstarted a popular string of games based on Disney afternoon properties. Critics were impressed with this Capcom game, giving it mostly 8s and 9s. Electronic Gaming Monthly called it the best game ever made for the younger player, while Mean Machine says that DuckTales contains some of the most exciting graphics I've seen on the Nintendo. Even Nintendo Magazine System loved the game, describing Scrooge's plight as trying to save his massive bank balance from a fate worse than Gary Harrod's financial affairs. I guess that joke would have made more sense if I lived in the UK in the early 90s. But not every review was as kind, with Reyes complaining that it's a shame that more wasn't done with such a great Disney character. Even Electronic Gaming Monthly's Sushi X complained about the toned-down difficulty. While I'm sure this is nice for a kid brother or sister, you'll probably enjoy the game, but find it beaten after the first day of play. That seemed to be the theme throughout the old-school reviews. Many complained that it was too easy and aimed squarely at children. As somebody who played through it recently, I'm not sure I agree with that assessment. But hey, I was a kid when it first came out, so I guess I was the target audience. I'm probably biased. Hey, thanks for watching us talk about the Disney Afternoon Collection. Are you excited? I know I am. In other news, I'm back! I know it's been a few days since I posted a review, but I have a good reason. Actually, I don't. I just needed to take a long weekend. I'm currently playing through both Thimbleweed Park and Ukulele, which will be getting reviews in the coming weeks. I'm also going to be taking a look at Switch or Die Trying, which has nothing to do with Nintendo's new system. 
It's gonna be a busy month, so I recommend you click the subscribe button and support what we're doing here. Until then.